Hi guys, it's Tammy with Cheers to Creativity. And I really should be on here talking to you about flowers and the Blooming Brushes membership that just opened up. But I realized I had some gnomes that I needed to tell you about. Mother's Day is just around the corner. And you've probably seen me paint this gnome before. Let me see if I can turn it the right way up so it's facing you. Give me a grace, please. Um, but I've got a couple of the blank gnomes kind of left over and I've got some of the pieces and I thought if you hadn't quite gotten around to figuring out something for Mother's Day this might be a fun thing. So I wanted to show you the gnome. He's not right side up is he? Hmm. Hey I'm trying to find some comments on my phone here but Facebook has been really fun lately. They sometimes show it to us and sometimes don't. There we go. No. One more time. One more time. This way, then that way. No, then this way. There we go. Now it should say welcome. <laughs> Sorry, guys. All right. So the gnome is really pretty simple. This is the shape of him. And then he's got this fun hat. So you can do anything you want. Like this one has a striped hat. And the one that I'm actually working on right now just has a blue hat. And he's going to have something else. So that's really up to you how you would do it. And then he's got these cute little shoes that are just black. But the idea is that you paint the gnome, you give him a nose, give him a couple hands, and um, then he's able to hold all these fun shapes. So that's the circle. This is welcome. You could have the circle say anything you wanted. I just have mine attached with Velcro, but he's got, there's a shamrock for St. Patty's Day. There is a heart for any time of the year. This one just says love lives here or Valentine's. Same heart, but this one's got a snowman on it. And there's tags that you can put anything on. I did a couple with some pumpkins. Here's a shape of a ribbon that could be any ribbon color that you need it to be. Here's a shape of a mitten. And here's the back of a truck. Now I have some of these that are finished that are available for purchase. And then I have some that are blanks as well. And if you have something you're interested in, I'm going to put a piece of paper up that tells you exactly what I have. And uh, then if you have something you want, just let me know and just email me or send me a text and we will get that to you. And of course, I can't find the piece of paper that says what it is, but I'll post it afterwards, okay? But for now, I'm going to set him aside. Set him aside. And this is my one that I'm going to work on. So before I do the beard, the nose was just painted with a flesh color. Um, I don't believe it's called flesh. I believe it is warm beige. So I've already given it a coat of warm beige. Oh, here it is. This is what I want to tell you. So, <laughs> sorry. Hot mess express. So with the gnomes, the gnomes themselves are 18 inches. And they come with the nose and the hands. And I have five of those available. And then I have other things that I'm going to go ahead and just put this list up when we are done. So I'm going to start with our nose. I've already given it a coat of the warm beige color to give that just a little something, a little extra. I can find his nose. His nose is attached. But I see how he's got some, just a little bit of color down here really pretty simple to do so I'm going to take I'm going to give my my nose another quick coat of the warm beige not being too perfect about it at all I'm going to pick up just a little tiny bit of red on the corner of my brush maybe just on the corner and then I'm going to find a spot on my plate and I'm going to push it back and forth until it blends to a color I like. If the red is too dark for you, I'll just put it all a little more over to blend it that color. You can also do this with pink. While my paint is still wet, I'm just going to lightly lay that color down on the bottom and up around the sides a bit. So I give my nose a bit of a blush. Why am I not getting this camera ring going? I'm much better with my phone than I am with my iPad. But that just gives it a little more interest. Same thing on your hands, to just kind of give them a little bit of separation. 
I go back with the flesh color and I can pick up either a darker flesh color or I could just mix like a Rossi and in with my flesh and I'm just going to kind of follow the finger shapes and pull it down a little bit just to give it a little bit of separation. It's not much but it's just enough to give him a little more definition. What I really wanted to show you is I wanted to take the time and show you how to do the beard. And to do the beard quickly, I use, this was just base coated with a gray. Um, my gray looks a little dimensional because my brush was probably a little dirty from my black. <laughs> I'm going to use a rake brush. Um, this is actually a wisp brush from Royal. It's one of their kids brushes. It comes in a package of three. They're available at Michael's. They're available, um, I believe, at Hobby Lobby, and I know on Amazon. <clears throat> I'm going to start with my white paint, and I'm going to pull it out on each side. I want to make sure I can still see separation in my brush. And to show you that separation, we just going to one little line here. Can you see that there's lots of little lines that come out of that? So I'm not having to paint every strand of my beard. And I'm going to stay kind of up on the tips of my brush. If I thin it with any water at all, I'm going to make sure I want to take it down onto my paper towel. So with my gnomes, I like to just first kind of go around the shape that he has. So I'm kind of following, like he has whiskers sticking out a bit off, off on the sides. Just to get my first bit of color down. You need to do this in layers. You cannot try to do this all in one, one time around. I think I need to move this over here so I'm not crossing over constantly. Hot mess express. Move this over here. So I'm pulling my white paint, and I'm just going to, first of all, going around the shape of my gnome's beard. These can be done so they hang. Um, I can have stands made for them so they stand. And don't worry if you end up right here. I got a little too much paint in that one spot. I can just come back after it dries. Acrylic paint is awesome. Once you can always paint over it, but just let it dry first. And then I can always come back with either black or gray and separate it some more. If any of you worked with a wisp or a rake brush before, if you have, let me know. Even if I can't see you now, I can always come back and catch um, them a little later. If you don't know what is going on with a uh, being able to see comments. Let me see if I can catch any. Hey, good afternoon. And somebody sprinkled. Thank you, Mary. I appreciate it. So the, the brush that I'm using is really a lot of fun for doing hair, for doing wispy grasses, and actually lots of other things. I actually use it in my flowers and some of my flowers too. So when we get going with <clears throat> our monthly flower membership that we have called blooming brushes we'll find times with a rake brush or the wisp brush same brush just different names <laughs> um, will come in handy if you think about a flower and you think about some of those times you see all those little lines inside of a petal they can be achieved by using this brush all right so i'm going to keep on they come in different sizes and i might have benefited from a little larger one but that's okay oh wow that was a mistake no mistakes, only design changes. What I really, really want to do first is just get some color down. I can come back and give it its shape once I kind of get an idea. So I know I kind of like, I can show you this guy again. Boom, boom, boom. This guy kind of has, why is his nose? I kind of like this part to be more of like a mustache. So I'm going to come think about this being my middle and I'm going to start going in those directions. Some of these lines going this way. 
and instead of going this way, Yeah, I used this brush on the Gnome Wine Glasses, too. Um, I probably used this size of them. I might actually, after I get this first coat on, go... You know, I only have probably 12 of these brushes, but I pick up the one that's a little more challenging to use. I'm being careful next to my hat because I want my hat and my beard to be clean, but I'll come back and clean that up with my hat color. But this at least gives me an idea of which direction I'm going to be putting my strokes for my mustache and my beard. Now, I wouldn't have to do that as a mustache. It could all just be straight down beard. It's all what you like to do. But you want to make sure all of it gets covered with your white skinny line somehow, some way. So I know this doesn't look very good right now. That's okay. That's why I said it takes layers. This is just to give you enough idea of where it's all going to lay down at. I am going to just go quickly grab a little bigger brush than that one. Um, you can do the beard with just a round or liner brush. This is just going to make it go faster. But when I told you I have a few of these, um, I have a few of them. <laughs> so all I'm doing is just moving into the bigger one. <laughs> same, same technique. So I've pulled my brush, my paint of my brush. I'm going to just start going. Oh, yes. What a difference. Having the right size brush is sometimes really helpful. All right. Getting this on here. I like to get most of my white on and then come back and give a little bit of gray, maybe even a touch of black, just so it has some dimension to it. I'm staying up on my brush quite a bit. I'm not laying it down flat like this. I'm kind of staying up on the bristles a little bit. Hands are good to paint on too. So, but I'm going to get this guy going. I'll put the list up to see if there's anything anybody is interested in. Um, this is really so easy. You're, you could even work with it with kids, and that might be a fun thing to do for Mother's Day. And then I'll be back very shortly to paint some flowers with you. If you haven't had a chance to check out our blooming brushes, uh, go back and look at yesterday's post. I did send an email on it, too. Uh, very excited to be able to work a little more closely and specifically on flowers each month where we will do different techniques, work in different styles, work on different surfaces. So you'll get to learn a bunch of different things about, excuse me, surface prep and different ways to finish things and just be a little more detailed instead of when I just kind of pop on here. So just to give you an idea, it's quite a few more layers as you can tell. This one, it doesn't look like I did too much with the black, but maybe a little bit more gray I showed up right underneath the mustache. Hello, Gladys. Hello, Carol. Thank you so much for stopping by and watching. I've got lots of things planned for lives for this weekend. Um, I had lots of things planned for the week, too, but you know what? We sometimes just have to go with the flow, and that sometimes that's the reason. If there's a reason it's supposed to work that way. Last night was supposed to be alive, and uh, um, just somehow it didn't work out, and it was a lo lovely opportunity to have dinner with my hubby, so that was kind of nice, too. So, it's going to be a beautiful weekend in northern Illinois. We deserve it. We all deserve nice weekends. Um, so, I'm really excited to be able to go tomorrow and watch my grandsons play soccer. They... They play at two different fields, at least tomorrow, they're not at the same time. Last week it was the same time, different fields, cross town. Uh, Grandma and Grandpa had to split up between the two of them. <laughs> so this week we'll both get to see both of them, which is very, very nice. 
spending time with my grandchildren is one of my very favorite things to do on the weekends. And they both love to paint, and my sweet little granddaughter too. So, so that's kind of my plan for my Saturday. And to get back over here and share some more flowers with you guys. So, have you started thinking about flower gardens at all? I thought about them. I haven't actually done any purchasing yet. Um, we buy these big, gorgeous baskets for our front porch. And um, they're just gorgeous. They last us until October. They're just beautiful. But being where I live, <laughs> it's not quite safe enough to plan on having those out on their own quite yet. I think we'll give it another week or so. And they're so large that they're too big to like bring back <laughs> um, inside once we put them out. So I'm just grabbing a little more white paint. Like I said, the real trick in creating your beard, this beard or any other beard, is the layers. And to kind of stay up on the brush. And I tell you often, no two of my things ever, ever look alike. I always love when people say, hey, can you make me one just like that? I can make you one similar. <laughs> Don't ever promise things to look exact. I can decide if I want to start having a few little curly cues in my beard. I think I do. It's okay to go over my shoes. When I'm making my curly cues, I'm just kind of, when I'm pushing down my brush, I'm kind of coming up and lifting up. Pushing down and lifting up. It's going to give you that little more of a curled look. All right, we need a little more up in here. And then I'm going to need to let this dry so that I'm not just picking up the paint that I've put down. So my mustache part is pretty dry so i'm going to add another layer up there same thing white paint and i'm just going to make sure he's kind of wispy Actually concentrating. <laughs> so, got a couple of flower pieces to work with you today or this weekend. I think we're gonna do um, show you how to do a real simple bloom on just a little a shelf sitter canvas. They could also be transformed into a card. Oh, I'm painting on my piece of paper that I was gonna photograph for you. I'll share that again real quick so I can get it in there. It'd be great. So I have five of the gnomes. I have six mittens. These are unfinished, six unfinished mittens. Um, five of the stacked snowmen pumpkins. That's like three of them stacked together. Five stars, three narrow tags, um, three ornaments. They could also be fishing bobbers. Uh, four of the ribbons, a bunny, two circles. And then I have the, the one gnome I just showed you finished. He's available for sale. This would be best for local pickup, but we can figure out what shipping would be as well, if that is of interest to you too. I did these last year before everything shut down for a couple classes. And I'm not quite ready for in-person classes yet, so <laughs> I figured if somebody would like to work on them on their own, they certainly could. All right, so can you see a distinction between our our mustache and our beard. I'm going to rinse my brush. I'm just going to get a little bit of the gray. I could do black too. And I'm just going to cheat and use just a little bit of the corner of this. I'm just going to make sure I can see a separation. I might as well let my paint dry first, but I do. All right, so just to give you an idea. I showed you how to shade the nose. Hopefully I gotta get this in a placement where you can see it. There we go. So his nose would go be right by his hat, like that. And then his 
hands on each side of the things that you can hold. So again, there's a little welcome circle. That was the back of a truck that says find joy. That is the unfinished mitten. <laughs> the unfinished ribbon. Got a couple of the tags that are painted and a couple of them that are unpainted. Hi, Cheryl. And sorry you couldn't see what I was doing. I think it was I hadn't pulled it down right. And then there's a little snowman, the hearts we done. So all those shapes will be listed. But my point was to wanted to really show you that using the rake brush or the whisk brush really makes getting your hair done much quicker getting it time to have a little bit of dry time between will really help you create your layers just be real patient and if you should get to a spot that has too much too thick of lines you can always go back with the gray and break it up and you can always go back in with just a regular liner brush and accentuate any of the curls you want to. This is just a little bit more one lined. I'm going to lift this up so you can see a little closer. And variation. All right. I'm going to put this right side up, I think. So I'm going to see you guys in a little bit. I need to go run a couple little errands, and then we'll come back and we'll paint some flowers. Hope you're having a great afternoon, and I will talk to you soon. And we'll see if I can actually find our finish button on the iPad. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.